All right. I hope everyone had a uh, good lunch, uh, had some good discussions and all of that. Uh, and our first session uh, after lunch again is going to be Andrew Brown talking about shared everything threads. Um, so uh, give him a warm welcome. Hey, uh, my name is Andrew. I can someone give me a thumbs up in the room that you can see the slides I'm presenting right now. Should be the title. OK, yep, okay. a lot of thumbs up. <laughs> Ralph, that wasn't a thumbs up. OK. Um, here's the agenda for what I was going to talk about in the next 30 minutes. Uh, I'm going to explain some of the history of threads and WebAssembly. Uh, I'm going to explain what shared everything threads is about, and I'll give you a progress report on uh, my uh, my work towards this proposal. So jumping into the history, uh, soon after WebAssembly was initially launched, released, uh, Ben Smith uh, started championing the initial threads proposal, which is a WASM proposal, like it's a WASM spec proposal. Um, eventually, uh, he moved on and Conrad Watt in 2021 took over as the champion and that that proposal is now at stage four. So that's a that's a part of WebAssembly proper pending some final kind of cleanups and being merged into the spec things, but everyone's voted that this is like a part of WebAssembly. Um, in 2022, several of us uh, initially championed by Alexandru from Amazon uh, came up with a WASI proposal. So this is at a different le level called WASI threads to add a spawn primitive to uh, WASI. So you could spawn new threads. And after many discussions and a lot of talking about that, that will perpetually be stuck at stage one of the WASI process, and it'll be available only in, in the WASI P1 target. And so this proposal that I'm talking about today is called the Shared Everything Threads proposal. This is again a WASM proposal, so it's on the official WASM spec, um, championed by myself, Conrad Watt, and Thomas Lively from Google. And that uh, reached stage one last year, um, and I've been working on it since. Actually, other people have been working on it as well, and so I'll, I'll bring that up in the, the progress report. Um, so, so what is this shared everything threads thing we're talking about? The, the, like the key thing to remember is, it's in the name, uh, we're putting shared on everything. So the shared attribute is going to be attached to not just memories, which the first proposal added, but instead to tables and globals and heap types and everywhere, everything functions. Um, and and the, the key like invariant, you know, rule here is that shared state can't touch non-shared state. So here's a table that explains that. You know, non-shared state, which is what you have currently, can you know touch non-shared things. That's you know as is today. Non-shared stuff can also touch shared stuff. That's also as it is today because you know a non-shared function can touch a shared memory. So that's going to continue to work. Uh, also, at the the bottom row of the table, like shared things will be able to touch their shared things. But the key thing that will not work is you will not be able to access. Uh, non-shared things from a shared context. So if you're running in a shared context, you won't be able to touch a non-shared table or global or memory or heap type or anything like that. And that that will be enforced by validation. And so why why would we have this shared split? Well, you know, as a WebAssembly core spec proposal, this needs to apply to both standalone engines, which is what many of you deal with here today, but also browsers. And so, you know, on the web, um, there's a lot of assumptions about JavaScript and DOM objects, and and these JavaScript objects don't like being called cross-thread. Um, and, and and of course, J JavaScript property access is is optimized, but not thread safe. And so, you know, by splitting the world into shared and unshared, you know, the web can have an accurate accurate view of uh, which objects can be touched from where, uh, and they don't have to, you know, completely rewrite the V8 engine and stuff like that. 
I do want to mention here that these slides that I'm presenting are actually Conrad's words. So if you don't like them, boo Conrad. Um, continuing on, um, you know, the JavaScript world is like inherently non-shared, you know? And so uh, when, we, when we try to access uh, non-shared JavaScript from a shared WebAssembly context, in a browser, uh, we need some something special, right? And so that's actively being discussed in this proposal. There's a few GitHub issues I could point you to if you're interested in more details about that. Um, it's not as easy as just saying, oh, let's make all the JavaScript, JavaScript objects shared. That'll be fine. No, um, well, they've tried that. You know, there's this shared structs proposal out there, but yeah. So, um, Outside browsers in standalone world, I think the uh, things are easier. Uh, you know, most things could be marked share, shareable or shared, and you don't have this like um, JavaScript host to deal with. If anyone has questions, I will occasionally look at this view I have of the room, so just feel free to raise your hand. Um, That slide, not the one I want. Um, okay, so what are the differences between uh, these these three different things I just talked about? One is uh, l let me just show you what what the initial threads proposal uh, brought to WebAssembly. So you could mark a memory as shared. That's that first row. You could do atomic loads and stores, and you could do some read, modify, write operations on memories. And crucially, you could also, um, there's these two instructions, wait and notify, which allowed you to do mutex convar stuff. And that, along with WASI threads, which was just a single import that let, it, let you uh, spawn a new thread as a new instance, um, that together was enough to give us, you know, the right primitives so that in WASI libc you could implement like eh, most of pthreads. Not everything, but enough that it would work. Um, there were some gaps, but yeah, some people like that and have continued to use it. In fact, if Dirk is in the room, uh, he mentioned to me VS Code, you know, successfully used this for and is continuing to use this. Um, you know, the original Threads proposal plus WASI Threads as like uh, implemented in WASI libc. But what does the shared everything Threads proposal bring? Well. Now you'll have shared, you know, shared functions, shared tables, shared globals, all that, right? You'll get shared everywhere. Uh, you'll also have component model um, intrinsic functions. I think I'm supposed to call them built-in functions. Can't remember which. Um, that will allow you to thread, you know, it, 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 this will replace the, the WASI threads, thread spawn. So you'll have a thread spawn as a component model intrinsic. You have uh, a way to retrieve how many um, you know, what's the available parallelism on the system via the hardware concurrency uh, built in? And, you know, other things that were just missing uh, from the original proposal. So it, it this proposal has kind of become a grab bag for all the things that we should have added originally, but we didn't. So you'll get um, memory ordering. So you'll be able to do sequential consistency or your know, acquire release orderings on like atomic memory accesses. Um, we're going to try to solve the thread local problem. Uh, that's pretty important in the browser. And there's been like a lot of discussion again on that in the in the um, spec subgroup. Um, there's a new pause instruction that should map down to the lower level CPU pause thing. And there's integration with GC. So these last three rows here um, allow atomic accesses with memory orderings to all types of, you know, um, array and struct fields, items, stuff like that. And and the wait queue at the end is actually a special way to to wait on GC objects. Wait and notify on GC objects. Any questions on this? I'm, I had to kind of fly through the features. Nick, is that? Is that a question or is it? Uh, 
I'm, I was just trying to get ready to okay. unmute okay. the ceiling if there were questions, but it seems like not. So please yeah, continue. Going there. Um, so you can sort of see this progression is like filling in the holes. You know, originally we didn't have a way to spawn. You know, we didn't, but there was, there's no way to do memory ordering. It's now we're kind of getting that stuff in this final proposal, hopefully the final proposal. Um, so here's some other questions like why, why would we abandon WASI threads? Wasn't that a good design? Well, it was simple. Um, that was good. Allow us to experiment. Um, and it showed that people wanted and needed threads in WebAssembly. Uh, but, you know, both the browser and WASI threads used a new WebAssembly instance as kind of the unit of, of uh, spawning. Right. Every time you spawn a new thread, you you created a new WebAssembly instance, but that's not going to work very well with the component model, which uses instances for its composition um, instead of parallelism. Um, why no thread spawn instruction? Uh, well, you know, Conrad wrote this for me, and and the 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 bottom line here is that. Um, you know, we you know we need both the standalone side and the web side to agree on on what can go in this proposal, and they weren't yet ready to accept a thread spawn instruction. The hope is that one one day when this proposal is more mature, you know we can we can add that. Uh, and sort of to answer some questions that we had this morning, why is progress slow on this proposal? And one reason it's slow is. Uh, for me personally, I, I don't have any, you know, outside the browser standalone engine use cases. Anyone saying, hey, when's this feature coming? Or anyone to work with on those things, right? Where I could see, you know, how this helps their their use case. Um, and so I'll kind of ask for, for that later. I, I asked this in the, the Plumber Summit we had, like in the beginning of the year. And all I remember is like getting crickets. So uh, that that's sort of led to one reason why this why progress is slow. Um, it's also slow because there's there's more people involved. So right? there's more users to consider. And um, in WASI threads, it was very you know standalone focused. We could you know just design it and experiment with it and go with it. Uh, here we have to deal with the web, you know the spec side of things. There's you know more people involved with opinions about what should or shouldn't be done. And the final reason is, you know, it's going slower because we're trying to solve these things more completely, right, than the original proposal and pretty carefully. WASI threads was experimental in, in various ways, and that was good. Uh, but this time, you know, I kind of want it to stick. I, I don't want to have to revisit this again. Um, okay, let me jump into the progress report. So, you know, I, the way I think of it is at, you know, kind of different levels. And so if you're trying to run threads in WebAssembly, you know, from a C program right now in a browser, you can do it. Everything's green. Um, at the spec level, you have what you need. Binary is all set up, you know, in terms of like um, encoding the actual instructions. You can compile things within script in, and then in the engine, you know, in the in the browser, you have these web workers which allow you to do this instantiation, and it all works. So this is all good to go. I would also say that if you are interested in using threads in the old WASI P1 world, that will also work. Well, with some exceptions, you know, TLS probably doesn't work like you would want it to, but um, for the most part, you know, the the thread spec, the WASI thread spec. Wasm tools, the Wasm libc, the, the engine, Wasm time, and other engines all support Wasm threads pretty well, and it should just work. Now, let's talk about what I'm working on currently. I'm right here, which is working on the Wasm time engine. But what I've been working on previously is the, you know, the the spec, uh, the the changes needed to the component model spec. The WASM tools bits like to actually emit the instructions. Haven't gotten to any of the WASI libc bits yet. And so for that reason, you can't really um, run any threads in in this WASI P2 WebAssembly world. 
Okay, another thing I'm going to show is, you know, the Chrome world. Um, and where are they in terms of this shared everything threads, you know, implementation? Um, so, you know, the spec is okay. They don't care about the component model spec for this stuff. Thomas Lively has been working on Binarian to get, you know, instructions in place so they can emit uh, the right instructions. Uh, I don't know where they're at in terms of inscripting. Um, yeah, we'd have to see. And but I do know that there are several V8 engineers from Google working on figuring this out, how this is going to work inside their engine. And so hopefully that gives you a rough idea of where other people are working on this proposal on the web side of the world. Oh, one more point about this. Um, they are not, you know, these people who are working on on this implementation are only interested in some parts of the shared everything threads proposal. They, you know, their priority is like, you know, supporting Dart, Kotlin, Java, those types of things in the browser. And for that reason, they obviously don't care about the component model, but they don't even, they're trying to avoid uh, caring about shared functions right now. And so what they're gonna, you know, one of their prime features that they wanna use is shared GC objects. And so they're trying to make sure that the shared, uh, they're, they're focused on the shared GC objects first before they work on anything else. Any questions on this? Okay, I'm gonna dive into more detail for each of those levels. So starting down at the spec and going up through the engine, I'm gonna like talk about um, where things are at. And so when it comes to the spec for shared everything threads uh, proposal, there's a subgroup for this that's been meeting uh, this year. Uh, a lot of the discussion has been centered around browser issues, such as, you know, finalization of registries and this new wrapper called Threadbound Data, that type of thing. Um, uh, I would say most new issues recently have come up because as I've been implementing this, uh, there's holes in our spec, things that aren't fully vetted or maybe even incorrect that need to get fixed up. Um, and so one of the big, uh, you know, to do items is figuring out how we're going to do TLS. How are we going to, um, you know, interop between shared and non shared things? And there's some people in this room, I think, that have actually suggested things for that. And so if you're interested, I can point you to those issues. Um, and the, yeah, what, what I want to show with this chart is, you know, after the initial, you know, flurry of activity around the the proposal, most of the issues and PRs have been, you know, opened or dealt with. And we've seen less activity because I think, you know, we know the problems now that, that are yet to solve. So I've also had to, um, you know, work on some of the component model specification because that's where we added the spawning primitives. So these uh, these built-ins thread.spawn and thread.harbor concurrency are added directly to the component model specification. So they are added, in fact, in that in that P top PR. Um, and recently, we discovered that you know the component model didn't encode you know recursive GC groups the right way. And so there's another PR out there yet unmerged. Um, if you're sitting by Luke, if you could just sort of elbow him to see if he could merge that. Um, uh, so that that's kind of, oh, yes. One final thing to discuss about the component model is, um, came up recently, when we're talking about component model functions, especially like component model built-in functions, it would kind of be convenient if they could just be if they could just appear as both shared and unshared in the core modules inside a component. Um, but I don't know if that breaks things, so we might need to discuss that. Uh, but what I'm trying to, or what we, several people, maybe Alex, Conrad, a few people have talked about this. What we're trying to do is not have to propagate shared attributes all the way through the component model system. Here's where I've been focused recently. So um, since April, I've been contributing to WASM tools 
all the encoding and decoding bits for these new instructions, these new types. Uh, I haven't been in a terrible hurry because, like I mentioned, you know, no one, no one was, you know, breaking down the door for the for this feature in this community. Um, and, and also because I've kind of found different challenges, right? Like uh, some of the interaction with GC wasn't wasn't all the way there. Thank you, Alex, for helping me with that. Um, there's there's some missing bits, you know, we had to go back to the spec and, you know, hammer some things out before I could fully implement them. Um, but eventually the hope is that we'll be able to turn on fuzzing for this new feature, uh, add some of the features that aren't fully designed yet. And I've kind of been waiting on them. Uh, and then, you know, there's there's been discussions like um, there's a shorthand for ref types that we might need to remove because after some discussions up in the spec, you know, we don't want the, the shorthand in the tools. So might need to get rid of that. But I, I would say overall that the, the state of this is okay, right? Like right now, if you get clone WASM tools, you know, this stuff is there. Mm. So the, the state of the engine though, I would put in progress, but it is uh, maybe more towards red than towards green uh, because I, I've just started this. And so there's many things to figure out. I'm currently working on how to translate these, you know, components that use the new canonical built-ins into the actual things that WASM time can, you know, emit and run. And, you know, there'll be big changes to WASM time that some of us here have discussed, like when it comes to VM context or, or new shared APIs. We'll need to add new instruction lowerings for all the new instructions. Um, we'll have to figure out a way for access to WASI to be, you know, thread safe in the in these shared contexts. And obviously, something I haven't even really considered much, but we'll have to get figured out is how these interact with with the new GC uh, work that Nick is adding to WASM time. So I haven't been in a hurry about this, but we'll see what people say if they. Um, are are interested in this happening sooner? Obviously, before we can get a, a you know a full example uh, working with this new proposal, we'll need to get a tool chain in place. And so, probably the easiest place to do that would be Wazi libc. And here's some things to figure out. So we'll have to um, map pthread create to this new component model built-in. And I I don't I haven't like uh, dug into this too much, but I think it might involve something with WASM component LD. Not sure how we're like actually uh, satisfying the the uh, you know these built-in imports when it comes to the WebAssembly module. We'll also have to mark functions as shared, and probably you know what I've discussed with LVM folks is we'll just mark everything shared. And uh, another part here that we'll have to get worked on is, you know, this time around, uh, I think we want to have a more extensive test suite up at like the C, C++ level to ensure that we're covering, you know, that, that, that the implementation is way more complete. Um, I have a PR 369 out there from a long time ago. Maybe need to revive that and work on that a bit more. The final goal here is that we'd have a WASM32, WASIP2 threads target for C and C++. And so eventually that could get propagated to Rust and eventually other languages, maybe we were talking about Python and stuff like that, .NET, they could use uh, this target of WASILibc and WASISDK to compile for this new version of threads. All right, so that's pretty much it. I The conclusions here is that, you know, shared Everything threads is the new way to, to do threads with components. Um, there is still some work to be done with these design issues, um, but I'm trying to get all of these layers set up so that we can actually run some experiments and test things out. Um, the work is slow, so if you'd like to help me out, here's how you can do it. Um, absolutely contact me. Here's some contact information, but um, if you want to help, one thing that could help me is if you could describe to me, you know, motivating use cases 
uh, for this in, um, not in browsers so much. Well, you could tell me your browser use case too, but uh, I, I need to be able to communicate the standalone use cases to our thread subgroup and understand those and make sure that, you know, all those things are taken care of in this, this bigger proposal, right? It also helps me for prioritizing things at work uh, if, if it's clear who needs this and for what. If you're looking to just jump in and implement this, um, you know, I think the first thing is just adding pthread tests to, to WASI libc. Um, that's a that's a good starting place. Contact me if you want to do that. And eventually, hopefully, if you want to, you know, collaborate on a joint blog post, I'd be happy to do that. I see, oh, Chris Woods. Okay. You have your hand up. Go ahead. I am gonna volunteer. <laughs> okay. I'm happy to come along and give a presentation on some use cases. I have okay. just this week got through doing implementing one. Uh, so happy to go through that in as much detail as I'm allowed to, I will. Um, also happy to collaborate on a blog post if it helps. Cool. Any other questions? Ryan. Yeah, so um, I guess I have an interesting use case as well, but I'll uh, send that to you offline, I guess. Um, but, you know, I just have one question about the spec where I very clearly understand, like, you know, marking the different sort of WebAssembly objects as shared that are sort of directly manipulable. Like in the way you have memory.grow, you've got, you know, mutating globals, mutating tables and such. And then, you know, there's the matter of shared functions as well. And so I get that from like a, you know, theoretical kind of validation standpoint. But I also am kind of curious, like what, how does that change sort of, how does that change like the function inside of the implementation or like what that entails? Does it, does it imply some, you know, limitations on execution or, or something like that, you know, because I just, I guess for background, our, our use cases, we have these tiny WASM modules that we would like to be able to run on sort of spawned worker threads. Um, mm -hmm. And these tiny modules aren't really going to do any memory mutation. They're just going to issue mm -hmm. a bunch of post calls and things like that. And, mm -hmm. you know, we basically, when, when we're hitting the worker threads, we are very latency dependent but we have loading time kind of before these worker threads get spawned up. So ideally we'd like to be able to do as much loading, which means loading modules and ideally loading all of the instance objects and such at that loading time so that we can, you know, do things as quickly as possible. We're just ready to go when those worker threads start up. But, you know, in the current model, there's this idea that, you know, each instance is sort of thread scoped. Um, and that sort of doesn't fit the model we want. And so I guess I'm trying to understand a little more sort of behind the scenes of like what, you know, what sort of the function shared implies, but uh, yeah. Okay, well, quote, but. I'm, I would, I'm gonna, yeah, let's, let's talk offline about your use case. I would love to understand that better. Going back to the original part of your question, which is about like, you know, I interpreted it your question as, um, you know, what what's the you know what 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 what's different about marking? What limitations do I have if I mark a fun function as shared? And you don't have really any limitations when it comes to what code you write in that function um, until validation time, right? When you try to validate that function, you will not be able to access. Um, you know, if, if that function is shared, you won't be able to access an uns any unshared things. Mm -hmm. um, when it comes to the second part of your question, I need to, I, I think I just need to understand a little bit better what you mean. Right. Well, I guess the second part of my question is actually, is there performance overhead to marking a function shared? Like, it, does it change the way <laughs> that an instance or an engine is expected to execute a function because now it needs to 
uh, I don't know, do some kind of juggling of its execution stack or something of that nature that that would end up impacting. Hopefully no. <laughs> Hopefully no. Uh, but there is like like some let, let's take a like an example like a like a shared global set, mm -hmm. right? Instead of a. Um, can you guys hear me? Okay, I'm hearing a buzzing. Okay. Uh, if we talk about a shared global modification, like setting a, a shared global versus sharing setting a non-shared global, there is going to be a slight difference in the code that's emitted because you know maybe even will lock when we set the the global so you mm -hmm. know there might be some you know you, you have to protect the shared things from concurrent access right and so yeah there might be performance issues there but i don't think globally like when when you're talking about like setup stuff i'm like i don't think there shouldn't be any like substantial difference in that regard but again, let me let me understand your use case more offline. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So Conrad's here. I can also give a little more context about shared functions if that would be useful and the motivation for them. I mean, if there's no other questions, then. <laughs> uh, we did have uh, a couple of questions in person over here. Um, yeah. Can I can I just yeah, it's on talk to the ceiling? Yeah, uh, I have um, uh, two questions, hopefully quick. The first one was there was a reference to shared GC objects uh, earlier. Uh, it would be great to have a definition of what that means. Is it just specific to browser land or that's, is that a WASI thing? And then the second question is, um, oh, oh. oh. Uh, Andrew, can you hear me? Oh, OK, it's just Andrew. Okay. I'm back. Sorry. OK, I missed the last one minute, so. OK, I'll ask my question. Yeah. The first one was, I have two questions. The first one was about shared GC objects that you mentioned. It'd be great to get a definition on that. And then the second one was, you were talking about use cases. So earlier in the day, we heard about all these async plans, um, including um, like background, background tasks. And I'm mm -hmm. curious uh, if if those are use cases or if that's just infra that you have to hook up to, and that isn't it, that isn't really all that useful to you. Uh, can you repeat the last part of the question again? Well, well, it just seemed like all the async stuff we heard about today. Yeah. You know, yeah. we heard that, like yeah, the all all the all the asyncs you could ever want, you'll get. It seems like that relates to your relates to threads. I'm I'm assuming. So does that help you with use cases? Oh, I'm not in any way trying to suggest that that would be everything. Just asking if it helps. Well, I think actually, you know, Luke had a good slide there towards the end where he says, you know, basically we want all the async things to work with all the thread things and all the thread things to work with async and every possible combination to be like designed well together there to be no issues um i do not have enough knowledge of the async work to say right now if there will be issues um but i hope luke's been kind of monitoring what we've been doing <laughs> so that there won't be okay and then what about the first question with the definition for um Shared PC objects. Conrad, do you want to take that one? Yeah, sure. So are you familiar with the existing GC objects proposal? Uh, not really. So there's already a core WASM feature, which basically adds an instruction set to WebAssembly that allows you to allocate um, objects with a fixed structure. And you can think of these as roughly analogous to the kind of JVM bytecodes that you would use to allocate objects. And this is a way, the motivation is from the web point of view, we already have WebAssembly sitting on top of this big powerful GC that JavaScript uses. So why not just uh, expose some kind of basic API for that within WebAssembly? And this Got has it. now been fully standardized and there are a bunch of languages targeting it and seeing some pretty nice speed ups. But the limitation is because we're effectively reusing the JavaScript GC on the web, 
all of the objects allocated by these opcodes have to stay in the thread where they were originally allocated. And then the shared GC proposal would be relaxing that restriction. Ah, wonderful, thank you. Thank yes, it's worth me. noting, I do, I do want to amplify one thing Joel Dice was saying in the chat. WASM GC isn't a universal solution. There are some languages that end up not being able to use it. Yeah, I understand. I, uh, but I understood the definition now. Yeah, including .NET is one of those that yeah, yeah. can't use it. Yeah. Uh, I saw that there had earlier been a hand in uh, Teams that was raised, but I don't see it anymore. Uh, oh, that was Richard. Oh, Richard. Yeah. Okay. Uh, any other questions for Andrew or Conrad? All right. Uh, thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you, Conrad. It's all good. Thank you for the presentation. It was great. All right, our next talk is going to be about TLS with uh, Dave Backer. Uh, so give us a second to um, set things up and we'll be right back. <laughs>